Hi there. Welcome to this build of a Great Plains Trader 60. Now in the last video I was working on the wings and we've got those more or less completely finished now. They just need a little bit of profiling and sanding but essentially they're finished. Previous videos we've been working on the fuselage and then we stopped so we could fit the wings. Now we're back onto the fuselage and we're going to get this finished ready to start profiling it, shaping it but also fitting on the tailplane and the fin. Now in this video specifically I want to be working on the hatch over the, um, the fuel tank compartment and around the engine bay get all that finished and then I'm going to start to close in some of this. I'm not going to be closing in the back I want to leave that until I'm fitting the servos and the control rods or snakes. But we can start to think about closing in the front section here. But before I do that, I want to fit the engine and I want to fit the nose gear, get the fuel tank in and make sure all the linkages are right and everything fits. There's holes for the fuel tank lines and uh, the last thing we want is to start covering this in, filling it, this in with sheeting on the bottom and losing access that just makes our life more difficult when we come to fit it out. Now I've had a, a little bit of a delay in doing this because this lovely Merco 61 that I'm going to use as the power source for this initially, I needed to have a spacer for the dustbin muffler that goes on so it just sits a little bit outside of the uh, the nose of the plane and I haven't got a spacer so I've made one. Now if you're interested in how I made that have a look in the description below this video and there'll be a link there to a short video just showing how you can make a, 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 an engine spacer with fairly limited tools. So right I'm just going to move the camera in now and we'll take a close look at the fuselage, the nose area, and I'll show you specifically what I'm hoping to achieve in this video. Well eventually I'll cover the underside of this in using some 116 birch ply, 1.6mm, and that'll go from the front of the firewall to midway on this crossformer here, the trailing edge of the wings. And then, oops, and then the back half will be done in balsa. But this plywood will just bend nicely, as I said, it's nice birch ply and give quite a lot of strength to that front section. But first we need to get everything fitted out front because I don't want to lose access to this underside because it's going to be crucial for helping me to set up the nose gear, which is obviously it's going on the firewall there at the front, but I need to put in a permanent linkage secured to where the servos are going to be in this central portion. And I want to do that before I lose that access because it's going to be a fiddly job anyway but even worse if you can't actually get to it. So that needs to be done and then we need to look at um, installing the fuel tank and I'm going to be putting the fuel tank on a little bit of a shelf and I'm going to use these lightning holes that I cut in the doublers where there's a little bit of a shelf and I can put in these pieces and maybe a little bit more balsa to sit the fuel tank on. Now having a shelf like that will allow some foam to insulate the tank and it will lift the tank higher up and it will make the fuel outlet of the tank more in line with the spray bar of the engine and we'll get better fuel delivery that way. And also by having that lift it up, it'll give us a space underneath to push our nickel metal hydride 6 volt radio gear battery right up to the firewall if we need to increase the weight in the nose. The chances are this is going to be a nose heavy plane if we're not careful because I'm using older heavier style engines. So I'm also making provision to move stuff back down towards the tail because we need to get the CG right without adding any additional weight if we can. Now in lifting this fuel tank up we're going to need to cut a little bit out of the windscreen and we're going to need to make provision within the cover 
the hatch that we put on here and I've just got some pieces of balsa here and I'm going to cut out where the fuel tank is and put that on like that. Now I think I've probably misinterpreted the plans or uh, made a mistake when I made the fus fuselage sides and I put on these top pieces here. Don't need those, better without them. So I'm going to cut off the front of the fuselage level with where the hatch is for the fuel tank compartment and I'm actually going to make that up with the same balsa I use for the hatch and I'm going to bring that out to about there and I will trim it out to allow the engine to go in and also trim it out here for the for the muffler. So right, well, I've done the nose leg and the connection for that now, the steering leg, so we'll have a quick, quick look at that. If I turn the uh, fuselage upside down you can see I've got the uh, snake, control snake here and it's much longer than I need to, it's going right to the back of the kind of electronics bay under the wing so that I can then trim it to the length I need for wherever the servo is. Now the orange, I've got the white outer sheath and the orange inner sheath and if I just move that we can see there. Now if I move that you can see the nose leg moving lovely and smooth plenty of movement there, probably more than I need. If I just move that round, there we go. And if I turn this over now so we can look at the top side. So on the platform for, where's my pencil, there we go. On the platform for the fuel tank, I've actually made a little bit of a balsa tunnel to hold this white outer sheath at a distance from the firewall and that allows this orange sheath a little bit of sidewards movement and that gives me such a smooth uh, better action than if I was trying to hold the white outer sheath here somewhere and we can see hopefully you can see that moving from side to side as it operates the nose leg. Right well, I thought it was time to do a little bit of an update on the tank now I've got that in before I start working on the nose and the and the hatch. As you can see the tanks in it's protected by foam from vibration sides uh, along this top here I've actually shaped that out a little bit and also this former at the back which I'll show you in a second. I've also put this cross piece in to stop the tank going forward and that's pressing against the front of the tank with again a little bit of foam to insulate that and that now is really secure and if we look from the side view there's a little bit of a, a rise so I've got the tank as high as I can but I can accommodate that, lit, that uh, raised up tank within the underside of the hatch cover so that, that should be okay and a quick view underneath you can see I put on these pieces of triangular stock just tiny little pieces just to try and give a little bit more of a fixing to that. There's a heavy nose landing and um, it doesn't trash the plane <laughs> then at least hopefully that won't uh, slide forward and damage the tank. I've done a hole in the firewall and you can see they're big enough for the three pipes to come through, the fuel tubes, the breather, the filler and the engine feed. I was originally thinking I'd do three separate holes but to be honest it was easy enough to do one and I've chamfered and smoothed around that so there's no uh, nothing to snag and catch the the pipe the, the fuel pipes now on this former at the back just see if I can line that up with the video uh, you can see I've shaped the uh, the back of this former here to allow the fuel tank to sit out a bit into this compartment I think having the the fuel tank back like that has just given more space here for if I need to get to these nuts it's not putting too much pressure on the hoses at the front. So that's all done now and I'm going to work on the hatch. So definitely time for another update before I start to uh, glue all this together and finish it off but I just thought I'd show you how it's constructed so I've got the windscreen which I'm going to stick on there because it'll just cover up these these joints and it'll look a lot smoother and then I've got a 
piece of covering which is going to go on top of the tank and another or a tank hatch and another piece of covering which is just going to go on top of this so I wanted to show you before I glue these pieces on and I'll just glue these on with alphatic resin and some weights I think but here we have the the hatch and what I've done is just cut out where the tank is lifted up as I said and I put on these um, pieces of plywood here just to act as a um, hook to hook under <coughs> oh excuse me too much balsa uh, to hook under that front section there or that, that rear section I guess it is so that just hooks under and then I will probably have a single screw coming down into a blind nut and that will just attach down like that now because I'd cut this out I wanted to strengthen this back edge here so I've just put in some and I don't know how thick that is one and a half mil plywood here what I did is I just cut that down the whole width so it would fit in sanded it nice and smooth but I did it short and I've put in balsa back in at the tips so that when I profile so when the hatch is on and I profile it I'm not trying to profile the um, the, the plywood I'm just doing where there's balsa and I'm not going to put much of a, a radius on there so we're going to, we've got that piece there to square it up we've got a piece of balsa that's going to go on that just to bring it up to the same height as the tank that will then slot in like that and then the final stage I've cut down this side of the nose on the fuselage I'll tip that over probably lose all this balsa tip that over and you can see there I've trimmed it now that is probably still a little bit tight and it will need to come down a little bit more because it will get quite hot like that but what I'm going to do is I've got this front section now that will go on there like that and once I've got that glued on once I've got that glued on I can then I think that's just line that up with the right lines once I've got that on I can I will profile this and sand it it will probably come away from here a little bit more and obviously this needs rounding off so that's what I've done with the nose and now I'm going to get on and, uh, and glue all these pieces on it, it's it's actually taken a bit of time to to make the hatch and put in the uh, the tabs and the uh, and the strengthening but I quite enjoy doing this kind of work and it makes it a good hatch that should be really secure there's nothing worse than losing a hatch off a plane right now I'm waiting for some of the bits to glue I've got the windscreen and the piece of balsa here at the back of the hatch glued with alphatic resin just off screen there I've got the hatch with the balsa on top being glued aliphatic resin and before I put on this front piece I need to have the hatch finished to locate this properly so I won't be doing that today that'll happen tomorrow and that's now going to give me time to sort out the throttle because I haven't done that yet I've known where it's going to go but I've wanted to trim down the mounts there's a bit of the mount here which is proud which I don't need and you can see here hopefully that one I have trimmed which has left me with a gap between the top of that and the top of the firewall so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a snake flexible snake just the same as I've used for the nose gear steering and I'm going to bring it through the side of the fuel tank bay which has plenty of room as you've seen earlier and I'm going to drill a five and a half mil hole in the firewall and that will just allow enough room for it to stick through the, fi through the firewall and I will epoxy that into place now to hold it with epoxy I'm going to wrap that round with decorators masking tape just a single wrap and then that will allow it to glue <coughs> excuse me really well once that's glued through I'll just sand the um, sand the firewall to make sure it's nice and smooth and that will allow the orange link or probably actually a stainless steel link to come out of the tube and connect through to the throttle well we've now got all of the construction finished with this fuselage and it's time to start profiling it and putting on the tailplane and fit. 
but first we'll have a quick look at the hatch and the engine and everything that I've done in this video and see how it looks. So as I said this all needs profiling and smoothing off but the basic structure is there now ready for me to work with and I thought it'd be useful to put not only the engine in but to put a prop on so we could see the clearance that you've got for the prop. It's not a lot, it's probably about almost half an inch which will be fine, absolutely fine. Now for the hatch I've got a 4mm domed head bolt there that just secures that closed and if I just take that out I will need to trim this very very slightly because it's above the fuel hoses and I don't want it to to rub on them so I'll just take off eighth of an inch off that and, and that will it will be held fully in the captive nut the T nut I've got underneath but it won't protrude beyond now if we lift up the hatch we've seen the hatch before uh, what we haven't seen is this piece of one and a half mil ply in there and that just stops the hole from working bigger and it also doesn't allow the bolt to dig into the balsa so it just makes it a lot more um, robust uh, durable I guess now in the actual um, engine bay or fuel tank bay I've got a piece of three mil plywood that goes under this uh, cover here and is epoxied in with a piece of 316 balsa underneath I don't know whether yeah I think that will just just about show and I've, what I did is I put the put the, nut, the, the screw into that and just pulled the captive nut up into the bottom of that that balsa and um, and that will be great for holding down the, the hatch got the fuel tank in the fuel lines are quite close here to the captive nut but there is clearance so that will be fine we've seen the fuel tank in there before nothing's changed except I have got the throttle linkage in there and that's this white sheath here but I haven't secured it I decided not to epoxy it yet I'm going to do that at a later stage it's very easy to put in and to take out so it's it's not going to be a problem now the engine if I just lift that out because it's only just rested in on the uh, on the bolts and put that to one side just to show you in the engine bay we can see there's the linkage there for the, uh, the throttle which like I say is really easy to uh, to put in so I'll glue that at a later stage when I fit it out I've also put a little bit of triangular stock under here just to give a little bit more support to this uh, this top here now the only job left now is to uh, turn it over and uh, still got our wheel steering nicely so it's not not binding on the underside so the two, two jobs I've got now is I've got a rather big piece of triangular stock I made ages ago which is just going to fit under there and there's cutouts there to allow me to get to the bolts here for the nose gear and the other job is to put on this 16 mil uh, 16 mil uh, 1.6 mil uh, 1 16th uh, of an inch birch ply and I'll do that in a bit a, a bit I, I won't uh, I won't come back and show you that that you can see that in the next uh, in the next video so this now is uh, is done and ready to be profiled and I'm really excited about that well for me now this is a really exciting part of the build I'm really looking forward to starting to profile this and turning it into from a fence post into something that's going to look like a nice flying trainer there's not a lot of material to come off these edges a few radiuses and that but it's surprising the difference it will make and that is going to be the focus of the next video where I'm going to be fitting the tailplane and the rudder uh, sorry the tailplane and the fin and I'm going to be doing all the profiling and essentially getting it ready to work out the CG and fit all the electronics and then we're almost there to get it covered. So I hope you've enjoyed that, I hope you found it useful and uh, 
please come back and see how we get on in finishing this Great Plains Trailer 60.